I'm Charles Steyer, you're at CherryValleyMusic.com and we're talking about guitar fundamentals. This is part two of a three-part lesson on bar chords and this is where we really get into it. Let's look a little bit closer. The first step is to really examine our open chords. We're going to look at what we call the E power group and the A power group because this is where the vast majority of our chords come from. Part one, the E group. We all know this is E major. You can also download the free PDF that comes along with this video to, to have the chord grid for all of these chords. In order to play a bar chord, what we're going to do is we're going to refinger E major to look like this. Because what we want to do is free up our first finger to be able to move that up the fret. So again, here's E major, refingered like this. So what I want you to practice very carefully, very slowly, is listening to E major like this, E minor, E7, and E minor 7. Let's look at that again. Here's the traditional fingerings. Now we need to get this finger free because that's what's going to be our bar. So now we're E major. minor, E7, and E minor 7. Those are your shapes for the power shapes for E. Now if we take E major and drop that down to A minor, again refinger it, there's A minor, A minor 7, A major, a major 7 and A7. All these are on the PDF that you downloaded along with this video. So let's look at that again. E is now like this. A is now like this. That's part one of this. Part two is to keep that same beautiful shape with perfect hand position with the finger freely being able to move around. Don't worry about putting it down yet. We're now going to start taking these shapes and just moving them up the neck. Listening very carefully so that everything is still clear. All the way up the guitar to fret 12. Now as you can see, and as you certainly know, down here the frets are a lot wider, then they get smaller and smaller as they go higher. One very important technique I want to show you is what's called the disappearing pinky, is that really as, as you start out, if you're here, and these fingers are beside each other, you don't have a problem. But when you get higher and higher, you're going to have a problem. So what we do is tuck the pinky underneath the ring finger so that it looks like that. like that and like that. So as you go higher and the frets get smaller that pinky disappears and is tucked under that for very tight positioning when we get high on the guitar. So E power chords all the way up, minor chords just carefully listening. Don't worry about the dissonances what you're trying to do is this absolute perfect hand position and keeping these fingers clear. Minor seventh sounds, or whatever finger you want to use. And again, the same thing with A. Just getting these fingers used to moving up and down the neck with the new refingered combinations. So as you can see in this lesson and as well as, as in the uh, following and previous lessons, things are to be learned in isolation. We can develop skills, but we've got to develop them independently. So if you're at this point in this lesson, you should really be already working on this, developing strength and calluses in your fingers of the left hand. You've worked on fingertips, finger pads. You've worked on perfect hand position in A and E shapes then perfect hand position in refingering the A and E power shapes as well as bringing those shapes all the way up the neck 
up to here with absolute clarity. Next time, we'll put it all together. I'm Charles Steyer. This is CherryValleyMusic.com. See you for lesson three.